one of the direct, productive, useful consequences of the differential volume element being uh, what we just found it to be in spherical coordinates, dv is r squared times sine theta d r d theta d phi. One of the neat consequences of this is it allows us to discover some things about the structure of the atom. So I'm gonna assume at this point that you already know, ooh, excuse me, you already, pizza, you already know why separable solutions uh, where we can separate the variables to Schrodinger's equations in three dimensions are preferred and you've already found some of the um, uh, what radius dependent uh, let's just say the uh, <clears throat> oh my gosh word the radial wave function right capital aura of aura so I can graph aura of aura as a function of aura right here, and I have for the 1s and the 2s. So the s's are nice because they're spherically symmetric, so this is all there is to it except for a constant. This is the wave function. So we're going to be looking at um, squaring that wave function to kind of get probability, but I'll put some question marks by this because we get some really interesting stuff with probabilities. So let's look at that. Let's first square this. I'm going to graph now aura, the radial wave function, square, and I'm not going to do the star and everything, complex conjugates be darned. So um, this gets uh, incredibly more steep, right? The 1s is now going to be like, meow, because it's really big here, and it's squaring that value. And then the 2s is going to be nicely positive all the time, but also really steep, and it will probably do something like, I don't know, it'll be like, whoop and then it'll kind of curve up a little bit and have another little whoop over here, but it won't ever get quite as big as it was. There's my, uh, sorry, my 2s and my 1s right here. So this seems to indicate that we would be very likely to find a particle at the origin. That is for an electron in a hydrogen atom on the nucleus. Does that make you uncomfortable? It, it kind of should. And you could graph this in, um, let's, let's graph this quote. Well, let's just graph what we call the square of the, um, maybe we can call it the probability uh, distribution function and we'll kind of sketch it in three dimensions. If I have X and Y and Z right here, or, or just like this is aura, I'm expecting for the one S to just find a ton of likelihood right here where we draw it by dots and then as we go farther out there's less likelihood and then there's even less like less even less likelihood farther out but just really really likely here so this is uh, the probability if we observe an electron is chances are we're gonna find it really close to the origin however that ends up not being the case because of the fact that there's just so little volume at the origin that it becomes vanishingly likely to find the particle at the origin. So what I mean is if you multiply this distribution function by the differential cross section, can you still see what I'm doing? Oh yeah, sorry. If you not the differential, the differential volume, then you get this function to look completely different. We multiply this by r squared, and you've now got zero at the origin, like seriously zero at the origin, zero square at the origin, right? So uh, there's this kind of an inverse characteristic here, but it starts at an actual value at zero. So it's, it's not really an inverse value. So if we look then at what... What are we really going for here? Really what we're saying is that the probability of finding the electron at some location is the probability density function multiplied by not just the, well, let's see. It's density times volume, right? So I have to take the probability density function and multiply it by the volume to find the actual probability as a function of distance from the origin. And the probability as a function of distance from the origin then will be multiplied by r squared. Never mind the sine theta thing, that's gonna be a little bit funky. But what I'll do right here is I will just say bloop, and then it can go down and fall off. So this is actually 
probability. But what is this meaning as a function of aura? This guy takes into account what the probability density is. This guy takes into account the fact that if I am at a very short aura, I don't have much volume there. But if I'm at a very large aura, I've got a whole bunch of these volumetric chunks that can be found at that larger aura. And that goes like R squared because it becomes a surface area of the sphere at a distance aura out. Okay, so this guy is taking into account the fact that we have way more of the differential volume out here than we do at that location right there. So even though it might be likely at that location, it's unlikely that location is in the game. You know what I mean? This guy right here, there's just so many of those locations, and that guy right there, there's only one of those locations. So it's, it becomes vanishingly small to find the particle actually at the origin. So this is a cool quantum mechanical result because in classical physics, you'd say if you cause the electron to be at rest, it would like to be right there. But there's like a dimension of the universe consequence where things don't tend to be there because there isn't very much there-ness to the origin. Okay, that's pretty fun. Let's see if this guy can actually do this one. Now, we're saying that it's going to, oh, we're gonna multiply by r squared. That means that although the probability, although the square of the wave function is larger at the origin than it is at this distance out here, we're still gonna get a zero, right? Uh, the r squared value is much more out there, so we're gonna have a very small blip at the early on, and it looks like that's gonna be a little bit further out too. Let's see, yeah, this is gonna be a little, it'll probably be a lot further out. It'll be like this, and then, woo! Now these are all supposed to be normalized. So imagine that the area in here is one, and the area in here is also one. Uh, 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 let's write that right there. By normalizing probabilities to equal one, we're taking the integral underneath this curve and saying that the electron must be at some distance from the um, from the nucleus of the atom, and so uh, that's a reasonable statement, right? Okay, so this is actually really cool because it helps us to understand why although there seems to be a peak in the probability density function, actually probability becomes zero at the origin because there isn't any origin. Like the actual origin is one point in all of the set of points, so it is uh, a set of zero. Yikes.